Oh, great, ladies and gentlemen, we have the, uh, the, the final presentation of B-Sides 2022, Khalil Lemtafa, on a subject that Mark uh, mentioned, um, Bug Bounty. Khalil. Thank you. So, hello everyone and uh, welcome to the last talk of today, which is titled Bug Bounty Recon the Right Way. And uh, as you may have noticed that the word right is between two double quotes, so we will discover together in this small discussion or just small talk, is it really right or not? So, um, who am I? I'm a full-time student. I have a bachelor in network security and computer systems from uh, Qadi Ayad University in my home country, Morocco. And uh, currently I'm following a cybersecurity master's degree at ELTE. And uh, I am a student software developer at Ericsson. Also, um, during this year, I created the cybersecurity club at my university, which is called ECSC. And uh, on my free time, I love to do bug bounty hunting on HackerOne and Sinacre team. So, the first slide of this talk starts with three words. Understand the organization. And uh, when I say this, I really mean it because you have to understand everything about the organization and who is this organization you are going to deal with and uh, like when it was created. And I mean, I have some questions here like you should ask, ask yourself, like who is this company, whom it's working with? Where is it located? And uh, this is a very important question that you should remember because we will cover later in the slides. And uh, have I used these applications before and so on? Uh, for Recon, you have a lot of tools to play with. There's Wikipedia, there's Crunchbase, Census, Google, Zoomai, GitHub, Bing, DuckDuckGo, like literally anything that has a search bar on the internet can help you in this process. And uh, more assets equals bigger Recon surface. This is a very simple equation that you should put in your mind while doing uh, Recon. Uh, the scope is divided into two types in bug bounties in general. There are wide scope targets and uh, small scope targets or programs. So for the small scope programs, they generally have one to five assets, maybe more by two or three assets, but not too much. And uh, in the other hand, you will find the wide scope targets. So they may have a lot of things that you can play with. And uh, since this talk is, uh, Focusing on recon, we will talk only about wide scope targets. So the components of the wide scope are a lot of things, like you can find subdomains like star.target.tld. Uh, you may also find CIDR or CIDR notations for uh, IP addresses or uh, mobile applications like Android, iOS. You can even find cars that are included in scope or uh, hardware. And a good practical example for a wide scope target is uh, Tesla, which has its own program over background uh, platform, which is a bug bounty platform. And by the way, for each uh, slide where I referenced something, you will find a link down below where you can just go and it will take you to the same page. So uh, why Tesla has a big scope or wide scope? Because as you can see here, it has a lot of things to look for bugs there. and. Uh, they mention in the first line that a hardware product that you own or, or are authorized to test against, like a vehicle, bar wall, etc. So if you have a Tesla vehicle, you can definitely hack it. If you found a bug, a critical bug, for example, you may get $15,000 for it. Uh, the web section of the scope is this. So there is uh, tesla.com, tesla.cm, tesla.services, and they even explicitly mentioned down below that any host verified to be owned or uh, to be owned by Tesla Motors Inc. is included in scope. Uh, domains, IP space, and anything that is explicitly mentioned that it's owned by Tesla is definitely in scope. And this is the mobile section of the scope. They um, included the official Tesla Android apps and the official Tesla iOS apps. For the small scope, it's the same story, except that 
they have a limited attack surface and they definitely need a different approach, so automation might not be useful here. Now comes the tips and mindset part of the talk, where am I, I'm going to give you some tips that you should put in your mind. And the first one is an answer for the uh, question that I told you to remember. Where is it located about the company? And uh, this tip, I called it a country-based subs or subdomain brute forcing. Uh, why you should always check out the origin of the company because, uh, for example, if we have a company which is uh, based in Netherlands, you can do subdomain brute forcing based on Dutch word list or Dutch words. So um, you have the target and you can brute force its subdomains using Dutch words since, it lo since it's located in Netherlands. And uh, it is always recommended to use this method after gathering subdomains with other tools and general word lists. I did an experiment for this, and uh, I used NocPy, which is a subdomain brute forcing tool uh, that works through dictionary attack, and it's available on GitHub. And uh, I combined it with a Dutch word list from the sec lists. Uh, this was the first one of the two using nor normal subdomain brute forcing, using the default word list of the NocPy tool. And uh, you, as you can see here, it gave me some results, but they are not really good because there's a lot of things that you can find. So I added the word list using the tag W uh, option, custom word list, which is in this case the Dutch-based word list. And uh, as you may notice here, I got some different results like active.volkskrant.nl. Uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, Volkskrant is a, prog a target which is available on uh, Integrity, and this is the uh, link for the program. Integrity is another European bug bounty platform. Uh, yeah, and these were the subdomains that the tool found using the other word list, like verker.volkskrant.nl, verhalen, Verkisingen, and so on. So yeah, uh, you just have to be creative and look for the right things in the right place. Don't do what everyone else does because you will not find something. And uh, an extra tip that it is always recommended to uh, run subdomain enumeration on a big list that you already gathered. Like for example, if you gathered subdomains using asset finder, subfinder, sublister, all the tools that you know, it is recommended to run subdomain brute forcing on that big list, like this command right there, sub subfinder, type DL subdomains, and HTTPX for resolving them. And uh, don't be like this cat right here. Don't wait for the results to come out. You can automate this part and go take a coffee or go sleep, then return back, you will get your fresh new word list of the sub subdomains. Um, next tip is about copyright recon, which is from the big man of recon himself, Jason Haddix. By the way, make sure to follow him on Twitter. He posts some great tips uh, about recon and bug bounty in general. So um, this tip is specific for wide scope targets, including the acquisitions. And uh, the tip is uh, every website has its own copyright in the footer. So he just grabs that copyright word and puts it between two double quotes minus the main domain on, as a Google Doc or on Bing on, or anywhere. And uh, he finds some other interesting domains and subdomains that are controlled by the same company. And uh, he even mentioned that he found old marketing sites, outdated installs of software, build tools, and more. And uh, yeah, I did again an experiment over AT&T, which has another program over HackerOne, and at and is another wide scope program. So I went to their official website, at and and uh, I went to the footer of the website. As you can see here, it has the copyright word. So I copied this sentence right here, which is the copyright of at and and I put it as a Google Doc in text a column between two double quotes, the copyright minus ATNT.com, and I got uh, some interesting results that you can't even tell that they are owned by ATNT. And uh, I'm sorry if it's not 
visible, like uh, for example, turnupthelot.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it is owned by AT&T, and if you found a bug there, you can get paid for it. Uh, you can also search using older copyright words. Just replace 2022 by 2016, and you will get 2016 websites. And older copyright equals older websites equals more vulnerabilities. Uh, why? Because older websites use older software, which, uh, which have already CVEs and uh, zero days, or I don't know, and then there you can find more vulnerabilities. Uh, to the next tip is about note taking, and uh, I always say that note taking is the golden tip of bug bounty. You should always track your progress, note down every small detail that you found, and uh, use a time tracker. Personally, I use Notion for note taking and toggle track for time tracking. Time tracking, sorry. And uh, you are actually tricking your mind to see the progress and uh, do more because when you find something and note it down. If you come back later, like after one week or two weeks or I don't know, you will see that you did a progress and you can do more. Uh, yeah. And set for yourself some goals. Like for example, this month I will hunt for 20 hours and score $2,000 in bounties. And why I said 20 hours? Because I guess it's a normal average free time for everyone. If you are a full-time student or you are working in a company, I mean five hours per week will be nothing. And uh, I did the same before this talk. I picked the program, I stick with it, and I said that I will hunt on it minimum 20 hours and uh, score minimum $1,000 of bounties. And this is a glance for my notes. I divided each week or each day, what am I going to do? Choose a program, set up a VPS, tools, recon, and use the app as a normal user, hack and pray. And uh, finally, notes and some takeaways. I also wrote down some rules to not cheat and uh, yeah, just to be consistent in this challenge. And this is Toggle Track. Uh, actually, as you can see, it gives a pretty good visual analysis about what you did. So each time when you start Bug Bounty, you can just click on the play button and it will start recording your time. When you finish, you just click stop. And uh, yeah, this is the project. and each week and how much I did. So the results are the following. I spent 29 hours on that target and I scored only three digits. I didn't make it to four digits, which is $1,000. Probably I lost the battle, but I know that I will won, will won the war for sure. Actually, I didn't lose. What I actually won from this sprint is cash, recon data, I won knowledge, I made connections with the triagers and I successfully managed my time in exams period. Just make in mind that I did this while preparing for exams. Uh, to another secret subdomain gathering trick that nobody knows about, as you, everyone knows that uh, websites use HTTPS for security and uh, HTTPS have a relation with SSL certificates and uh, these SSL certificates have a field which is called subject alternative names. So what is subject alternative names or SAM? This field lets you make or register a lot of domain names or IP addresses that are going to be secured by the same SSL certificate. And for example, as you can see here, this is youtube.com certificate. And if we go to the subject alternative names section, you will find a very big list of domains that are owned by Google. And uh, yeah, like urshin.com. Who knows that urshin is owned by Google? So you can just go there and hack. Like it's a less crowded area and definitely you will find something. And uh, uh, it is always recommended to use this for a very wide scope target or a target that lets you hack on its acquisitions. Because if you find something which is in a third party application or an out of scope application, they will not pay you. And uh, you can use an IP address approach for this uh, using bgp.he.net, which is a search engine, search engine for ASN or autonomous system numbers. 
and you just write the name of the company, for example, Tesla, and it will give you all of the ASNs that are registered for that company. And you can just pick that number, the ASN, and put it in asnlookup.com, and it will translate that number to an IP address blocks, or a list of IP address blocks. And for the last part, you can automate it using your favorite language, such as Bash, Python, Perl, or Ruby, anything that you like. And you got for yourself a fresh subdomains list that is most probably missed by most of the hunters. You just pick a domain or a uh, subdomain and start the hunt. Uh, yeah, this is the note that I've covered before. Uh, so when you talk to a server, it's like you are talking to a stranger. And uh, as I see right now in some eyes that you are confused because there's some Chinese in the slides, uh, actually, I forgot what I translated here, so if someone is, can speak Chinese, he, will, he can help us after the talk. But uh, why I did this? Actually, I did it on purpose to make you confused. So, as you can see here, this little guy is brute forcing a server that has ASP files using a PHP word list. So the server will actually feel like you felt right now when I showed the Chinese slide. It will understand nothing and will return just 404 not found results. So you have to always fingerprint your server you are dealing with and know which technology or which language that it runs. Just a simple control U and you will find out what it uses. Or there are some extensions like Wapalizer that uh, shows a lot of things that are useful on the server like the language or yeah, uh, some word list tips. You build your own word list. Uh, don't rely on the others that already built, and this helps a lot in the future. Save endpoints from disclosed reports, such as HackerOne slash Activity. There are a lot of disclosed endpoints that you can save in a new word list. You can always fetch paths from JS files using, for example, Link Finder, which is a tool that does this from GitHub or you can spider the web application and save the output. And uh, Burp Suite Professional Edition does this. Or if you don't have Burp Suite Professional, you can just use some tool on GitHub and you will get the same result. So, uh, by coincidence, the previous talk was about injections and uh, right now I will talk about an SQL injection that I recent, not recently, but I found some months ago. Um, I just picked the target and I started looking for the less crowded areas and domains. I put Wikipedia space, the name of the target on Google. Then I went to the Wikipedia page of that target and uh, I searched for the list of acquisitions that are owned by that target. Uh, you can use many other services for this, not just Wikipedia. And I found the seed which is controlled by the same company, say for example, target ebcd.com, and now let's do some subdomain enumeration. And uh, a tip for alive subdomains, I personally use uh, the tool HTTPX using the following flags. Uh, HTTPX, by the way, is a tool that does uh, HTTP probing on a subdomains list, so uh, you, that's okay. Whenever it runs over uh, the subdomains, it will check if it's alive or not. And uh, it's a tool by Project Discovery, and it's so fast, so I recommend using it. And uh, I use it with the following options or tags, tag title for the title of the web page, status code of the HTTP uh, response, the content length in bytes of the page, and uh, follow redirects if there are any. So this was the output of subfinder and, H and HTTPX on the target that I found in the acquisitions page. And uh, as you can see in the first line of the output, there's a subdomain which ends with index.jsp after the redirect. There's a 302, 302, and 200. So I just decided to hack on that subdomain. Uh, it gave a login panel, and this was the example of the structure of the subdomain. And the login panel had two inputs, username and password. I tested everything on that uh, login panel or login field, like SQL injection, code injection, XSS, cre default credentials like admin, admin, admin password, but 
uh, I wasn't really successful. I also checked the source code of, of the web page. I read JavaScript files, but I found nothing. Did I surrender? Of course, no. I went to the burp suite log. Uh, this was an actual screenshot of the login panel. And um, as you can see there, there's a post request sent to slash A2A slash redacted slash A2A underscore token. And uh, the three parameters were user ID, password, and organization. So I sent the HTTP request to SQL map and I continued with my testing. And uh, while analyzing the request on Burp Suite, I noticed that there's the word token in the path, A2A underscore token. So there is a token exchange in the logic of the application. So I had to understand what's going on. So the post request gives the following response, which was a 302 find found to another subdomain, subdomain which is called a2ahs.target.com. Um, SQL map gave nothing on the first try, so I had to continue my digging, and for this subdomain, which was a2ahs.target.com, after some redirects, it gets back to the first subdomain with the login error message that your credentials are not valid. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so this is interesting. The token is fetched from another subdomain, which was a blank page. I went to the subdomain and I found nothing there. So most probably it was an, an unfinished ticket by the developers that they just make that server respond with a black, blank page, but in the back end there's some token processing. And there's no trace for that subdomain on the JavaScript files of the first subdomain. And this was the big picture of the logic of the panel, the login panel. The post request is sent there, a2a.target.com, uh, a2a underscore token, and the token is fetched from the second subdomain, which was a2ahs.target.com. If the token is valid, it will return back to the first subdomain and it will grant you access. So this was the first URL that the post request is sent to, and I thought, if we have a subdomain, what if we just don't put it as a directory and see what will happen? And big surprise, I got a new login panel which looks older and I felt it was vulnerable to an SQL injection. Same fields as the first one, I inserted single quotes and same parameters as you can see. Test single quote and see the response. It's a 500 internal server error. So Definitely there's an SQL injection there. I tried normally to craft some payloads, but that didn't work, so I just copied that and sent it to SQL map for automation. And after 10 minutes, I was already in. I got the whole dump of the database. So the form was vulnerable to an error-based SQL injection, where the database sold a lot of sensitive information and I tried to escalate it to an RCE using the OS shell tag, but I wasn't successful. So I just decided to stop here and report the injection to the program. And that was the story of how I found an SQL injection in one hour of good recon. Here are some takeaways. You should always think of ways that others could have missed. Don't follow the crowd. Always be unique and go to a different path. Burp suite on the background always helps. So if you just go back and analyze the requests and the responses, you will definitely find something which is juicy and can make you money. And uh, put more time on something only if you feel that it's worth it. Don't just waste time on something and find nothing in the end. And uh, automate anything that the machine can do for you. Don't be like that cat that I showed before. And uh, yeah, this is the end of my talk. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. This is my Twitter handler. If you have any question in the future, don't hesitate to ask me. Thank you. Okay, do, we, do we have any questions for Khalil? It would appear perhaps not. Uh, you can always ask a question uh, when we finish, if you catch him. 
Khalil, once again, thank you. And my apologies for the telephone.